let's do um the Chippendale. Okay. Um oh it just alerted me that you're recording. Yeah, yeah. I should have been recording the whole time. I mean, uh people now all of our patrons missed out on all the warm up. My jokes. pants joke is totally wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> try, try to work it in during the uh, <laughs> your challenge, whether you accept it or not, is to work it in. <laughs> you know I'm gonna try to elevate this uh, camera real quick. Give me one sec. Yep. The camera is sitting on like a sign. There's no stand for it. I'm whispering. He's right next to me, but I'm still whispering for dramatic effect. <laughs> that lighting makes me feel like you guys are at like the back of a club or something. No. We're just doing coke back here. <laughs> <Crazy. laughs> That's why I wasn't invited. <laughs> a, well, you know, we're a married woman, you know, we can't. You know, yeah, we gotta look out for such you. things. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta look out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do all the dr hard yeah. drugs, and you know, we'll tell you about it. You can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so disappointing. <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so uh, let me write this down. So um, X Men, mm -hmm. uh, we'll do. Ed, what, what have you got? I got the diamond. Did you hear about that, Ashley? The malware no? attack, the ransomware on Diamond. Oh, I heard everything was late this week, but and I didn't even. Week. Yeah, they got oh, ransomware. God. So basically, they their system was down all last weekend. And only Marvel yeah. and DC stuff came because they're not with Diamond anymore. So Diamond's just. I didn't, I didn't know DC wasn't with Diamond. I knew Marvel no. wasn't. Well, DC left like kind of at the end of the last year. And Penguin, okay. who works with Marvel, they're also, they also distribute like DC graphic novels and IDW and Dark Horse graphic novels. So I think Penguin, yeah. Random House is a little take. They probably sent these hackers at them. I didn't even Inside. like I knew stuff was going to be late, but now that I don't work at the comic shop, I'm just like, all yeah, right, I'll just I, get it next I, week. I wouldn't have known unless, you know, I went in and there's like nothing new because they have, you know, yeah. tags and there's like nothing new <laughs> from Marvel and DC. <laughs> Suckers. It's like, oh man, did I miss everything? It's could it have been, a, could <laughs> have been a, 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 a tri joint sabotage between Marvel, DC, and Penguin Random House? I would think so. It's probably maybe like a bitter. They were like, fuck image, fuck Aftershock, yeah. <laughs> fuck AWA. Mm. Oh, no. Because, I mean, despite losing the big two and how shitty Diamond can be, they still serve a purpose. You know, a lot of these other publishers need them, you know. Okay. So we got X-Men and Cal for me. Uh, Ed, you said Diamond, and you had one more, right? I was going to, if you want to talk about the boys or just do like the, uh, like kind of that Disney Plus rundown, what we're looking forward to. Okay, yeah, yeah. Do that. We could do that. Let's do the, the boys thing is just more funny. Have you seen that, Ashley? The boys, the news. What is it? The Fox News, like uh, the Vought News shorts they've been doing for season three with like a Fox News. No, guy. but oh, I saw um, a water commercial and the deep did like the water <laughs> commercial. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. They have a fake yeah. Disneyland, like a Vought Land commercial and a Vought Plus streaming service commercial. It's in the, in the story. Oh, they're hilarious. Yeah. It's, it's they're so much more fun than the show, though. I. Maybe it's just me. kind of a downer, but these are fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these were like 10 minutes. <laughs> wow, it really does look like we are in some weird corner. I don't, I don't know. It, it, it kind of looks like a good setup in the bag. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if C will ever look at this, but this is like a Jalo Italian horror movie from the 70s. <laughs> like a hotel light, you know, the neon lights coming through the hotel room. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So, well, I, I guess that's a good point. We'll do. Um, We'll just do a general Disney Plus a day plus rundown. I can then launch into the X Men, yeah. uh, or I or I can at least kick it off of X Men, and then um, we can talk about our you know just what what's been announced, what kind of piques our interest, yeah. and then we can go into uh, Chippendale, and then <laughs> I'll follow Incal, and then Ed, you can take us home with Diamond because that'll lead into okay. um, Fistful of Comics. Mm. Um, Whose turn is it? Is, Ash is it your turn, Ashley? Well, I was gonna say I, I I brought one for sure. Okay, good. Ashley, do you do you have a new comic <laughs> you could spotlight? Yeah, I have one. I was just gonna use it Ooh, for my please. champion if it wasn't my turn. Oh, that's such a well, good idea. Yeah. Um. Well, if if we took that, would you have something to champion? Um. Yeah. Okay. Only because I don't have, I have anything. a movie. Okay. I, yeah, I don't have anything from Ben this week because I I just caught him at a bad wow. time. So okay. let's planned. Yeah. Plan to, uh, to jump in with me on, on uh, Fistful of Comics. 
And okay, then, I got a good one. Okay, cool. sounds good. Hell yeah. Did you okay. watch Shang Chi? Oh yeah, did you? I I watched it. It yeah. was really good. Isn't that good? Yeah. Hell I haven't yeah. seen the Eternals, but it was really I just yeah. The only thing I didn't like was uh that Wong uh abomination scene. What was which there... was cool, but I just it just didn't make any sense like to me. Like they were hang, like throwing the fight like they're it wasn't cool about yeah. it. Yeah, you know, awesome. here I, it was money. amazing, but I'm like, what's the point? Oh, yeah. What's the point? He's there I think trying it's... to make some money. Yeah, well, I He's think the point money up at the monastery. I think the point too is to introduce. <laughs> <laughs> He's, asking... He's asking Doctor Strange for money. Yeah. I think an end game or something for ice cream. It's like even like... a doctor. I saw those drawer full of watches in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> <a> shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they. I, I do see your point. It is kind of random. I think it's just mainly for like comedic effect, I, but also to put Wong and Shang Chi in the same vicinity. That like, this and, is how they and I think it ties in at the end where he comes get them at the exactly. bar, at the karaoke bar. Did yeah. you? Oh yeah, yeah. Where... I did really like all that Mandarin stuff. Oh, oh man, Ben Kingsley. That yeah, is... that's great. They tied that loose end up. That was really cool. Yeah. What was the name of the creature again? The two butt thing. <laughs> oh, it was so <laughs> cute. William or some. <laughs> yeah, it had like a formal name. It was adorable. Yeah, that's like the. You ever see Cat Dog? It's like the other oh end of God. Cat Dog. Like the two. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the point. other side. That's that, or they did that on The Simpsons, <laughs> the, the Treehouse of Horror, for the two pet <laughs> Yeah, it's like I oh, all pet no mess, and then the two butts <laughs> walk out of the machine. <laughs> yeah, Shang Chi is, and and you waited, and did you purposely wait until um uh, it got on Disney Plus? Was yeah, that a she's conscious? Not pay to see Asian actors. <gasps> no, Ed, I was gonna go. Actually, I was gonna go see it on Tuesday, and then I looked up and saw that it was yeah. coming out on Friday. Oh, so I was like, oh, I'll just wait three oh, days. Wow. Wait, wait. So, so you were planning to go catch it in in theaters like next Tuesday? Or this Tuesday, like Tuesday. Okay. like this past Tuesday because I didn't it. really I was like I'd rather see that than Eternals and then I was like oh I'll just wait three days and see it for free. Yeah, I I will definitely say Shang Chi is I enjoyed Shang Chi a lot more than Eternals. Like I I'm excited right. to rewatch Shang Chi. Not saying anything bad of like Eternals. It's, it's just like a different a flavor. Mixed. Yeah, I need to see yeah. it too. Are the deviants in it? Oh yeah, they are. But they, it's carcass. They, they are. Uh, his name's Crow for the uh, Crow, right? No, Carcass, the red guy. With no, the metal no, pants? no, 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 no. Oh, sorry, Carcass, <laughs> giant baby. No, oh, I think, that guy's I think, great. I think mean, had they had they uh, had they worked Carcass in, it would have been a much better movie. Oh, that would have been automatic but five stars. They had the deviants, but it was like an afterthought. It was like, hey, we're gonna do oh. something really uh, cool with the deviants, but we're not going to flesh it out <laughs> at all. It was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, it made it seem like this was gonna be a bigger yeah, deal. It's kind of. They're kind of hand in hand. You kind of tap one without the other. That's yeah. Weird. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll go into it a little more um, uh, when we get started. Uh, but hmm. yeah, Shang-Chi, I've, I've been looking forward to watching it on Disney Plus all week. And I guess also Jungle mm -hmm. Cruise. Now I'll, I'll watch Jungle <laughs> Cruise now. The Rock to me is like, I'm going to wait till his movie comes out for the free, whether it be on yeah. the streaming service, on, you know, cable. He's he's gonna be yeah. good, but the movie's yeah gonna yeah be bad, yeah exactly you know? exactly. I don't want to I don't want to pay for that experience. <laughs> what about Black Adam? Unless it's Fast and Furious. Yeah, true. Well, well, him and Vin. Black Adam. I did, I did pay to go watch Fast and Furious opening day in the morning. Like, <laughs> you have <psycho>. to. <laughs> yeah, but I went like at 10 a.m. in the morning. Like I oh, was a, a diehard fan. See movies. And this last one was not <laughs> that, that. It was not that great. This. The oh latest, well, uh, beg to differ, is, but. Were they going to space? <laughs> They drive into space. They went to space. They right. drive into space. Right. Yes. If I'm Are you kidding? Is it ludicrous? Is it, ludicrous? I, or is I, it yeah. another? Okay. No, it's ludicrous and um and uh Tyrese, Tyrese. Uh, or okay. whoever their characters are. Yeah, they go into space. <laughs> they just I just call them by their regular names. So I don't know their <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? They might as well just be the regular. You know, because their acting is kind of mid, yeah. and you're like, all right, you should just play ludicrous, and you should just play uh. Tyrese. You know? Um, but no, yeah, I, I uh when Black Adam comes, I'll probably pay to go see that in theaters. Yeah. Because it looks like The Rock is like, I'm going to bring my A++++ plus 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 game to this one. Ooh, yeah. So that is my uh, that is my Rock hot take. Wow. Um, I think that's a good segue to get the show. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Yo, Short Box Nation. Nice to have you back. This is episode 342, and if this is your first time tuning in, Welcome to your new favorite comic podcast. I'm your host. My name is Bader Milligan, and today I'm joined by two thirds of the rest of the Short Box crew. We got Miss Ashley Lanny Hoy joining us from the comfort of home. What's up, Ashley? Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah. Cool. I love you. I love you. I love you. 
<laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna phase that out. Uh, and then in the short box studio, oh, in person. here with me in person at that yeah. is the man, the myth, the legend, mm. Mr. Edmund Danzart, is with here with us as well. Yo, what's up? Oh, oh yeah, they, they, they don't want to stop. Oh, please, please, oh, please, guys, please, 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 please. You got embarrassing yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we'll be discussing some worthwhile news, updates, and headlines that have taken place in the comic and pop culture world that are worth mentioning, including some fresh Disney Plus Day announcements. And we'll see if we can't find time to chat about the Eternals movie. Um, of course, we'll follow that up for two regular recurring segments, Fistful of Comics and Champion Season. So something a little light, a little more relaxing for this episode. Uh, but before we get into the news, I want to thank last week's guest, comic colorist Nick Filardi. We had a great conversation, and I got a lot of insight into the world of comic coloring. So if you haven't heard his interview yet, give episode 341 a listen. It's very much worth your time. Um, Ashley, I don't know if you, uh, if you got around to that one yet, but I appreciate you so much more in what you do for uh, comics. Yeah, I haven't listened to it yet, but Nick's like really nice guy. I've met him a couple times at conventions. He's really nice, and I didn't know that his career was like 20. I didn't know he was 20 years in. Cause he's he looks so like young. You you think like he mm-hmm. got started, but he started um, when he was I think teenager, I believe. Yeah, and um, he he talked some shit too. I, I liked it. I liked it. Like he <laughs> he got on like his, his his soapbox and wasn't um uh, wasn't afraid to let you know to let people know that he's been in the game for a long time, and you know really uh, emphasized like how important a colorist is in the whole mm. process, and it really kind of gave me a, a heads up into how you guys get kind of like the shit end of the stick when it comes to like scheduling, like if the writer or oh, for sure. oh. take longer, like, We're you know what? Going through that now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good Thanks, one. Ashley. Oh, <laughs> all, wah, wah. Yeah, was, all will be revealed soon. <laughs> all right. We'll and, sneak behind the curtain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> kind of related, kind of related. Um, one last thing, uh, Short Box Nation. If you live in the Jacks or surrounding area, hopefully you've heard the good news already. We're getting back on stage in December to record a live podcast. And guess what? You're invited. Come out for a Spider-Man-themed live show on Friday, December 10th. We'll be recording the show at the Brian Gooding Planetarium at the Museum of Science and History. That's Mosh for all you locals. Mm-hmm. Uh, register for some free tickets. That's right, free 99 to partake in this fun. Uh, visit the Eventbrite link in this episode's show notes and come out for a damn good time. It won't cost you nothing, and you can enjoy the show for the rest of the Short Box Nation. Like I said, it'll be a Spider-Man-themed episode to coincide with the highly anticipated Spider-Man No Way Home movie. Put it on your calendars. Hell, if, if you, even if you don't live in Jax, I encourage you to spend money to Whoa. fly into Jacksonville yeah. in the, the show's summer oh my God. for that hour you know, show. <laughs> show's free, guys. I mean, True. I mean, you know. You can spend the money on travel. And I think you can get uh, tickets pretty cheap if you book now. I mean, <laughs> actually, I mean, what, you think people won't fly out to come for a live show? I, I mean, the you, pressure you know? on the performers. <laughs> true, true, true. We're, we're seasoned show <laughs> performers. Yeah. We can't um, talk. I might leak uh, Ashley's uh, writer list before the oh uh, my event, God. just to show <laughs> all the wild stuff she wants. Uh, diva over here. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, get those tickets now. Like I said, December 10th, live show, be there. Uh, that's my first shameless plug of the show. I've got plenty more uh, lined up <laughs> later on. But let's get into the news, and let's see what's been going on in the comic industry. Um, if you even have internet, you know, I won't even say cable. Oh, uh, Sorry. Oh, Distracted. that's right. Um, that's right. Uh, uh, Short Rock Nation. This, this episode is a little different. We've decided yeah. to catch up with um, technology per uh, the, uh, circa 2000. 20? I don't know. Tw- yeah. Well, pandemic. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> pandemic edition. That's right. Ashley, like, like I said in the intro, Ashley is recording from the comfort of home. Um, mm-hmm. if, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you get to you know see the video of this recording and see all the awesome stuff in Ashley's background. The Loki statue that she is always talking about. That's giant. Yeah, it's, it's legit, all right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's legit. And I think if Corey Torgerson, our, our resident god, the biggest Godzilla uh, yeah, fanboy you'll ever that. meet. Oh, um, yeah. Is Ashley, that your yeah. Godzilla or is yeah. that Josh's? That's your Godzilla? Um, he painted it. Oh. So, oh, yeah, he it, it was like a... Model? a model kit oh, he put together wow. okay. and just heads up that's just a... if anything ever happens to me don't let him sell this for 250 dollars, which <laughs> is how much statue? i told him it cost <laughs> <laughs> actually oh, no. how, about we, how about we take a break from the news and uh, uh go ahead. are you are you recording that are you on a laptop oh i'm on the uh an imac 
All right, we'll go ahead and carry the iMac around the room. Show me what else is on the uh, the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's pretty much just the cat. Right, and wow. yeah. Is that Pella? That's it. This is Tallulah. Tallulah. Okay. Pella. Yeah, actually, I named her after Tula Lotte, oh. my favorite comic book artist. Oh, nice. She got a little fancy with it. But yeah, she'll probably just hang out. She might bite me, but we can cut that out. If she does. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a, a crazy edit if, like, your tone just <laughs> like I'm so excited, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's get let's get back to business. Um, this past Friday was Disney Plus Day, which was wow. you know a uh, was it is it the first Disney Plus Day? I think this might be the second. Um, yeah, not so really sure about year? count wise. Yeah, but uh, another kind of big marketing day for for Disney Plus um, subscribers. Uh, it was an opportunity for Disney Plus to showcase as well as tease some upcoming projects. So many and title cards. Dude, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. um, uh, what was the last? San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. No, no, not San Diego Comic-Con. I'm sorry. It reminded me a lot of the joke that we made for DC Fandom, which happened mm. about a month or two ago, where it was a lot of like, yo, we really shouldn't even be mentioning this because yeah. we have <laughs> nothing to show you other than a title card, but here it <laughs> is. <laughs> Here's um, some concept art. Yeah, let's make a whole go. day <laughs> slash event out of it. So that was kind of like, <laughs> kind of. Well, I mean, to be fair, it was, it was a couple it of was like fun. pretty good teasers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Fun. And you know, if you're a Disney Plus member or subscriber already, which you know we all are on on this episode, um, mm. it's free. So I mean, it didn't cost me nothing, but like maybe 15 minutes of a long ass trailer. But <laughs> yeah, so they they revealed a, a lot of uh, upcoming shows, uh, showed some teasers, some uh, concept art for like you know uh, for projects coming up. And I wanted to ask you guys: um, Had you seen um, the uh, the Marvel Studios uh, trailer that kind of showcased all of the projects coming out? Um, and and w what caught your eye, Ashley? Um, I I didn't watch the trailer. I just kind of like scrolled through all the articles because um, I I don't know. I don't like knowing yeah. stuff too there far were only ahead like of time. Five second teasers though. They weren't like full on. No. That's even worse, because then you're like excited for it with like no end. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you this much: the 15-minute Marvel Studios uh, uh, trailer that is on Disney Plus, the first, I want to say, four if not seven minutes of it is really just kind of like a uh, recap of like um, all of their Disney Plus shows thus far. So it's like. You go through like WandaVision. So it's like this little uh, vignette, um, I think is a better word, a vignette of like all the big moments from like WandaVision. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, uh, um, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. And then it's, you know, another couple minutes of like Loki. And, and they even include What If, which I thought was cool because yeah. it once again kind of solidifies that, hey, yeah. this show is in continuity. It's, it's to be taken serious. They're doing a season two. They announced season two. Yeah, they announced season yeah. two. So once you get past all of the, uh, the vignettes and the recaps for the current Marvel or Marvel Disney Plus shows, and then they get into like the new uh, kind of teaser for the new shows. Primarily, um, they showed some clips and footage for Moon Knight, mm -hmm. um, She Hulk. Got to see She Hulk's butt. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah. like it just is like I'm I'm, I'm yeah, Jennifer it's... Walters. I'm a lawyer, and then it it base it teases you like that one in Moon Knight where you see like part of the costume, but you don't see the full. And it's like I... She Hulk's kind of like almost like that workout yeah. kind of spandex outfit. Um, I will argue that the Moon Knight trailer showed a little more they they oh, at least yeah. showed you you know if there, there was enough um shown that if you freeze framed some of the uh the, yeah. the scenes or stills you can get the full image but she hulk for some reason they were just afraid to show you anything you higher see a than butt her and like a green arm yeah it's like zooms mm -hmm. up and then it cuts to like uh um um uh the hulk talking uh what's his name mark ruffalo oh, yeah bruce banner the smart hulk yeah yeah <laughs> it's like they were afraid to show you the face but they yeah. show you everything behind which was I, I get it? They don't want to like completely like you know r ruin the moment or <laughs> you know even though it's a a, a big old trailer slash advertising event. Anyways, mm -hmm. yeah. but they also showed a um a short teaser trailer for um Miss Marvel was, as well, cool. uh, which I thought was looked really good. It looks very yeah, faithful. Yeah, she looks to, um, great. The and, and it's they kind of do a callback to the comics where she's she didn't change shape, but she's in the Captain Marvel outfit. Like in the original series, she basically shapeshifts into. The old version of Captain Marvel, the one with like the red sash and the blue kind of bikini outfit mm. she used to have with a lightning bolt. She did that in the comic, but in this one, it has her dressed up like on top of a building, dressed up as uh, the MCU version. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Like, Ed, Ed, what about what, what, uh, 
of the uh, projects that they announced, well, of the title cards that they shared of <laughs> upcoming projects, which I think I'm assuming all of these projects probably won't see the light of day until 2023, 2024, maybe even until yeah. 2025. I'm but did any pique your interest before the, I kind of go down the full list? The uh, Agatha House of Harkness. I'm like, really? Because I love Catherine Hahn. I was like, oh, oh. Awesome. And she's I, great. Do any of you recall if they had already teased or made an announcement about that or if this was like i haven't heard i wonder if this was based on the success of wandavision and, and how well received katherine hahn was yeah. or agatha was um because that, that one threw me off the most is you know we just were introduced to this character this year and we've yeah. already got a dedicated solo show announced and if mm -hmm. i had to guess it's probably gonna uh maybe recount her uh adventures uh early on and, and yeah. how she got to the city maybe and i don't know if they're the gonna town. transition her like in the comics where it's kind of like a where she bested her, but she can kind of help her control her powers, like as a mentor, a mentor, to a mentor type figure. So yeah, I don't know because it's kind of ambiguous what happened to I, her. I'd like to think they were like, "There's no way they were letting Ka Catherine Hahn just no, go away." No, she's great. Yeah, we got to make something. Awesome. Uh, give so her a fucking awesome. show. <laughs> it really felt. I mean, and uh, and maybe I'm getting a little ahead, but the title card for Echo, mm -hmm. which is a a very obscure yeah Marvel character in in my opinion, it's uh, a newer character. Yeah, definitely like a. Definitely a fucking D-list at the very most, right? If not a Z-list character. And that was tied in with Ronan and Hawkeye, right? That character. Yeah, comic. from like, yeah. Well, I mean, I, uh, she first made her comic appearance in like Daredevil, of course. And I want to say it might have been like during the Kevin Smith era. So like, you know, early oh. 2000s, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So it started out as like uh, uh, raised by Kingpin to become an assassin, mm. you know, uh, um, uh, becomes like a, becomes an arch enemy for... Um, Daredevil eventually kind of comes around, takes up the uh, Ronin mantle later on when like New Avengers comes around and, and whatnot. So, but for her to get her own show, I was yeah. like, damn. Um, I wonder if it's going to be like kind of a cold introduction where it's like, hey, here's the character and, and whatnot, or if she makes an appearance in the upcoming Hawkeye film or um, Hawkeye series, and that's how yeah. we, you know, um, kind of pivot from there. I think they just have to spin her off because, like, I've, you know, I've, I've I'm a comic reader, but I've never, I haven't read one comic with that character in it. No, <laughs> so I have no idea. I had to look up who. Echo was. Like, who the hell is that? Yeah, you, you've, you've probably seen her in a, a lot of like those uh, uh, David Mackey uh, Daredevil uh, covers from back oh, in the day. Oh, okay. Like she's the one with like the handprint uh, kind of tattoo oh. um, or mark on her face. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Still haven't read anything with her. <laughs> and was there anything else that that might have piqued your interest? Um, if I can stray from Marvel, they're doing okay. a uh, a Willow series, I think. From the uh, like 1988 um, Warwick Davis fantasy film, Val Kilmer. Mm -hmm. I don't think Val Kilmer's in it. Oh, so yeah, I missed opportunity. Fat Val Kilmer in this. <laughs> <laughs> but there's like a little vignette with him and like the actors, and they're like mispronouncing his name, and it's just a funny little. He's he's it's a pretty funny thing. So I'm kind of interested in seeing you know, you know why they're bringing this back because like I said, I don't think there was a big swelling groundswell to bring back willow <laughs> or to revisit this world <laughs> so but you know i like i like warwick davis he's funny and i thought that was uh and a lot of the cast is like uh people who are in the uh mcu so the guy that played mm -hmm. flash thompson and spider-man he's in it the um the main the main uh protagonist in winter soldier the girl the uh with the frizzy hair i forgot her name the uh flag smasher Oh yeah, 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 she's in it. So there's some MCU people in it. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Oh, uh, did anyone see the um, uh, kind of staying off Marvel for a quick second, um, which pains me at the moment. <laughs> but uh, the Star Wars Obi uh, Wan Kenobi series, uh, which is streaming next year. Um, yeah. of course, you know, even though that one is probably going, we'll be seeing that sooner than probably a lot of the other projects announced. They only shared uh, still and stills and maybe some um concept art for that one. Uh, but to see a Obi Wan Kenobi series, yeah, would and be they're doing that Boba Fett rad. series too. So, which that trailer looks. Uh, I know it, that one came out well before Disney, yeah, yeah, or yeah. a couple weeks before Disney Plus Day. But the trailer for that's got me pretty excited. I think that one takes um, is premiering either at the end of December or like uh, January. I can't recall at the moment. Um, yeah. Well, how long has this Obi Wan one been going? Or I feel like I heard about this like a year ago. I think they've been teasing it, or people have been wanting it. You know, and I think, uh, but it was never officially announced. Yeah, I think it's official. Official. It was kind of like rumors, I believe, but I think it's okay. Officially official. Yeah, McGregor is going to be back, and uh, is going to be back too. I mean, come on now. It's gonna and what's back. his name? Uh, Hayden Christensen. Yeah, where's that guy been? Yeah, they, he's coming back. 
I think he, he's better. been in hiding for the longest time, and now that he's like, yeah. you know, hated him. Now that people are like, nah, you know, he was wrong hating you, man. He's like, all right, I it's, guess it's been enough time. Yeah, I'll come back time. out of hiding. Uh, to to kind of go back to the rest of the the MCU stuff that's been announced, we've we've got um, a title card for Iron Heart, so yeah. the story of Riri Williams. Um, that's Agatha. live action, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Mostly, I think most of these mm. will be live action, like Secret they, Invasion. Uh, they did show like Nick Fury's gonna be yeah. uh, kind of the star of that Secret Invasion um, uh, project as well. Oh, uh, he looked cool. I did see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. With the scraggly beard, and he didn't wear the eye patch. It yeah, weird. and it just it was kind milky of eye. Yeah, yeah. ew. <laughs> 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 so uh, and then as far as animated ed you know you said that they are bringing back um what if season two or mm-hmm. what if is getting a season two which would be cool to see like more um i'm yeah. sure that they'll continue like the mcu uh uh what if plot points but i'm curious if they work in any like classic comic book plot points i think yeah. that was the only thing i was really missing from this uh first season um and i didn't f- watch the finale but they didn't finish the uh vision with the gauntlet kind of the ultron vision with the following the watcher chasing him down they didn't resolve that right that no they, they, they did they did oh they did yeah oh, the, yeah, oh it was so good you didn't finish oh. it i didn't finish it oh actually you like you liked what if yeah it was amazing i think there were I, one of those episodes I, I don't remember which one i didn't like there's one that there's one or two like, i didn't really, like that everything else. the zombies one oh the series. marvel zombies one that hey, was the only one that, series of it they're making more of oh it. great well <laughs> all the other ones were awesome <laughs> I think Party Thrower was probably my least favorite one. I felt like that one was just really, like, really with cool. Frost Giant Loki. You didn't like that? Well, Frost uh, Frost Giant Bro Loki was. was <laughs> I give you that. Um, they are doing a new uh, uh, animated show for Spider Man Freshman Year. Um, mm-hmm. Not much information on that one, but it'll probably be you know pre. Uh, what was his first movie? Far From Home. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. It says a uh, new animated series that follows Peter Parker on his way to becoming Spider Man. Um, hearkening back to the characters' comments. Well, just him groups. getting like beat up and stuff. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Definitely two episodes of him getting shoved. I don't want to relive those years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the cute, oh. on the cute side, we're getting an I am Groot series. Hey. Uh, it's gonna be a bunch of like original shorts exploring a baby baby Groot's gro- glory days. I'm sorry. It'll be a bunch of original <laughs> shorts exploring baby Groot's glory days growing up and getting into trouble. Um, oh yeah, because he's a teenager in Alaska. <laughs> Yeah, he's a teenage group. I guess I, I guess Marvel Studios <laughs> was like, yo, we can't let Baby Yoda get I know, this all is a this. cash cow. Yeah, hell no. Mm. We need another cute thing to sell. Yeah. <laughs> well, it kind of <laughs> reminds us about like, the OG cute thing. You know? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Marvel Zombies looks like it might be an um, uh, animated series as well, hey. but it'll continue the story from the What If episode. Because that What If episode from Marvel Zombies does end in kind of like a cliffhanger because it mm-hmm. ends with uh, uh, zombie Thanos with the gauntlet. Yeah. So I'm sure that they'll play into that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it as far as like the MCU stuff. I mean, for me, I, I will say the, the Moon Knight, seeing Oscar Isaac in action as, as Moon Knight you, has got me hyped. Are you saving the most important one? Oh, which one did I miss? The X-Men. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. I'm so, you know what? <laughs> I, I glossed over it because it was supposed to be. Okay, like, I was okay, going to detail shit. To, oh, this no, is no, no. Dramatic. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> oh, my God. How you know, you pass that up? only I would drop the ball to a really good <laughs> setup. You know, uh, let me. Let me let, well, I, I guess in that, in that vein, uh, aside from Moon Knight, which mm. seeing Oscar Isaac as, as like the main hero and then hearing that voice he's got, and you know, it looks like they're gonna play yeah. into uh, uh, you know Mark Spector and his multiple personality and kind of going crazy, which I'm all here for. Yeah, there's in the mm-hmm. short things that you see, and you see him like snapping too after like looks like he beat up a bunch of guys, and he's like, what? What just happened? Oh yeah, they yeah they had the um they they they, they incorporated the classic um just like the Batman uh mm-hmm. and the the Batman trailer where it's like him pounding you know a dude's face in <laughs> they, I was like oh Moon Knight's doing the same thing <laughs> gonna out Batman Batman yeah and real quick before I, before I talk about the the one that's got me most hype mm. um the She Hulk trailer as much as as we are cracking jokes about them <laughs> like kind of teasing the full like view of what she looks like yeah I will say that one has me interested because uh they are playing into her being you know uh the lawyer Mm -hmm. um they're they're working in the bruce banner and and hulk angle so we will get to see mark ruffalo it looks like he's gonna be making um an appearance in the series as well uh that one's that one's got me interested to see like hulk in a different light and in a um uh, more than just a supporting cast member yeah and hulk is like you see ruffalo as ruffalo and you see the hulk ruffalo too 
because he's like the smart Hulk talking to her. Yeah, so and you get that, to see two mm. versions. And that little scene where it's like it looks like clearly like a um, it's a, a lawyer commercial that Jennifer Walters is doing with her cousin. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to see me angry. Yeah, I was like, okay, th- that's, this looks like the comedy might be on point. Yeah, and that's from like the classic Hulk show, yeah, TV show yeah. line. Yeah, so I'm don't here make for me that. angry. You don't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> but the one I am, but the mm. one announcement. Um, everybody that had me, yeah, you're right. Not only just me, but <laughs> it felt like everyone I followed on Twitter, everyone just like in general that loves comic books as well as like animated um, shows, is the announcement that the X Men animated series is being revived for a brand new series. It's going to be called X Men ninety seven, mm. which I mean to me it's just like you know it's like. X-Men 97, yes. you know, like, we know what you guys want. We're bringing it back. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's supposed that's to pick up most people's X-Men, like, generation. Dude, that's, like, uh-huh. our X-Men. Come you know? If it wasn't, and I kind of feel like the Jim Lee X-Men series and this one go hand oh, in yeah. hand so well, because, I mean, I, I believe this was supposed to be based off, like, the Jim Lee, Chris Claremont sure. 90s X-Men series. But more series. people watched the cartoon. Oh, 100%. You know? yeah. 100, that was, like, my <laughs> gateway drug. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> I think we, I think I think my dad at my dad's house. Oh, I'm sorry. I think at my parents' house they still have the VHS of like the first two oh, episodes. Nice. I mean, I'm, I might have to go steal oh, it. Remember those ripoff things? The two episode VHS. Oh tapes? my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. But, so lame. So this new series, X Men '97, is supposed to pick up from the X Men: The Animated Series finale, which uh, uh, for anyone that um, might have forgot, the original X Men animated series ended on season five. Episode six. I think by then, if I'm not mistaken, like they, they had a lot of like their budget pulled. Mm. Um, that's why like it, the animation looks kind of wonky, yeah. um, and that's why it ends on such a um, short like oh, you know that number. Disney money now. Oh man, what? <laughs> Try canceling us after season five, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, the season finale of the original series ends with uh, Lalandra taking um, Xavier with her to receive the care that he needs uh, from the Shi'ar Empire because he was attacked at a press conference, which I think is part of the usual when it comes to like. <laughs> Charles Xavier, he just cannot show up at a press conference as a guest speaker because <laughs> some uh, uh, mutant yeah. hating. Uh, they only uh, had Zoom back then. Yeah. He could have just, <laughs> <laughs> just called in. <laughs> but some, uh, you, like the usual anti mutant hating motherfuckers always there. He ends up getting shot or something to that effect. But mm. that's kind of how it goes in that season finale. He ends up getting wounded, um, and the X Men have to say goodbye to him because he's got to receive like alien care. And they're not sure if they'll ever see him back. Which I, you know, I think, you know, if ninety, if this new series picks up from there, you've got a lot of room to tell that story oh, of what yeah. the X Men have been up to, uh, and, and whatnot. Bringing back a lot of the voice actors, from dude, the show big too. time. You've got uh, um, Cal Dodd coming mm-hmm. back as Wolverine, so that'll be legit. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, the original voice actor for Rogue, Nightcrawler, Beast, Mister Sinister, Jean Grey, and Gambit are all returning. And then you've got uh, original, the original writers like Eric and Julia Lulad, uh, yeah, Lou Wald, sorry. Um, and original director Larry Houston, they'll actually be consulting on the series, <clears throat> which I think is, you know, which I think is pretty cool that they, oh, yeah. you know, they their contributions aren't being brushed aside or, or they're not being forgotten. Like they mm-hmm. get to um, have a say in this because yeah. uh, I know that they were really invested in that series and it really kind of hurt them to see it, um, you know, for that budget to be pulled and they had to work with what they had. So to for them to be able to be a part of. The, this resurgence and, and be a part of like you know the, the fan excitement makes me happy yeah and it's it's very smart too to kind of bring back this show mm-hmm. to in, kind of whenever they decide to bring in the mutants into the mcu dude power I mean, play yeah yeah uh, so smart uh but you we're also getting some new blood too like uh, uh nabiu de mayo hope i'm saying that right but he was a writer on the netflix series of the animated witcher series uh, he'll be a writer on this series and then in the director role for this new relaunch is Jay Castro- Castrona. Oh, sorry, Castorena. Uh, he's known for his work on a few DC animated projects like Batman: The Killing Joke, uh, Gotham by Gaslight. Um, so you know we'll have uh, someone with experience there. And then as far as new voice actors, we got like Jennifer Hale, who's voiced like Jean Grey in the X Men animated TV series. And then you've got Johnny Bravo himself, Jeff Bennett, <laughs> oh. is joining the voice acting cast too. Wow. Nice. Johnny yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but this show, I, I believe, is, is due to hit Disney Plus in uh, 2023 is, is all I know so far. But I am super hyped to see X-Men nice. back. And I mean, you know, it's like the title card was 
plain and simple. X Men, comma ninety seven. One time for the nine seven. They even do the meme, the Wolverine meme, where he has the. Oh my God! Picture. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta bring that back. Yeah, they're playing into it. It's, they gotta it's so bring great. that scene back. Yeah. So, Are those episodes on Disney Plus, like the old ones? Yep. All okay. All okay. See, I never, I never saw them. I was um, when I had cable. It was X Men Evolution. Oh God. Ooh. Which is still uh, is it, it's, I liked it. I liked yeah. it a lot. That's the one with the. I just never saw the old ones. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, she's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd oh, say out of all, everything, <laughs> I'd say out of everything Disney Plus Day related, X Men '97 and and Moon Knight were my my two that had me the most hype. Um, mm -hmm. Ashley, w when I asked for um, you know what stories everyone was going to cover, uh, you've got an interesting one. It's not related to Disney <laughs> Plus Day. Um, I thought it was because it. I thought it yeah. probably fell in line with it, but this, uh, but this was actually announced a few weeks ago. How about you go ahead and tell uh, the Short Box Nation what, what are you spotlighting today? So I just found out um, spring twenty twenty two they are releasing a Chippendales Rescue Rangers movie, um, voiced by John Mulaney and oh Andy God. Samberg. It's live action and CGI. Yeah. Oh, it's Chip and Dale's going to have live action, action and CGI. Oh, it's no. going to have um, Gadget oh, and uh, Monterey Jack, the guy with the mustache. Yeah, that floats when he smells cheese. He like <laughs> <laughs> it just, it reminded me of, of like childhood. And I haven't even thought about the show in like 20 years. Oh, I boy. was just super excited to see this. I wonder what they're going to, yeah, who's going to be the, uh, more inappropriate Damn. drawings of gadget on deviant art coming <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I, I, that's I, terrible i hate i hate that i there is no um yeah. no image or anything for this i really want to see um i don't know that cgi and live action i'm not sure those usually aren't that great i'm kind of here to see john mulaney and andy sam oh that's as, great as, you know yeah, that's uh, cool I yeah it's like, like weird human chipmunk hybrids what was the cat the kingpin cat was that the bad guy? Like oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah I, I don't remember his name, but Ooh, I, I keep thinking <laughs> they did um, Rocket Raccoon. Like they can do a raccoon, they can do two little well, chipmunks. Very good point. Like that's why good, not? That's a good point. But, okay. But, what? <laughs> but, but see the Tom and Jerry is. I'm, I'm thinking like Tom and Jerry or. Well, that wasn't really CGI. I don't Maybe. know. I just. <laughs> what if they? Uh, what if they uh, do something like Sonic? Sonic, yeah, Sonic's okay. Yeah, I don't but, know. But but the same the same way that Sonic did, where they tested the waters first with like that little short, uh, that original trailer, out. and then yeah. everyone freaked out and, and they like, them, like oh, human no, no, teeth no. and real fur, <laughs> <laughs> <It was> like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> and they actually got bullied into making him <laughs> like this million dollar billion dollar company got bullied into redesigning him. Yeah, hell yeah. But <laughs> the people yeah. won that day. I don't know. Are they gonna be like weird real fur like? I'm I hope like so. Creepily gross looking, or are they going to be like smooth, like Sonic, like John Mulaney? No, they're going to be Mulaney, like super cute. John Mulaney has like, I love anytime he does like some voice acting, like especially in like Big Mouth. I like he's got such a, um, such a calm <laughs> demeanor and voice, but like oh, the God. shit he says and the things that like is written for him or now he I'm writes thinking of is like so an R rated <laughs> Chippendale <laughs> with the Big Mouth reference. Oh, actually, that know. is a very wholesome. Uh, story to highlight. Is there, oh, has there been Thanks. pictures? Have you seen pictures of it, or is it just the announcement? The only thing I've seen is um, they had like a little tiny script, like a literal oh. actual mini script that had the Rescue Rangers logo on it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that's what like that was like their teaser. Yeah, but it, it's coming out next year. It's not like we have to wait oh, years for it. Card. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. That is, uh, if you look, uh, that it's is like a mini image. script. Yeah, that is the image they use on Wikipedia. Oh. Okay. Oh, this is coming out. It's adorable. That is pretty cool. Mm. It's no, that's be pretty weird. Cool. No, that's gonna be cool. Ah. Actually, that is a wholesome uh, uh, news story to highlight. Are and, you surprised? And I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you've come up. Maybe it's just like the uh, the facade or, or um, characterization that we've made for you <laughs> yeah. on this show. And being like, you know, <laughs> a, a, a soul collecting yeah. dark emo goth. Uh, uh, you know, uh, murder loving. And if, I don't know. I don't know. Where that I'm likes chipmunks. <laughs> chipmunks. If it's in the, if Dale's wearing the Hawaiian shirt, that's gonna be yeah. No, no, he's no, he's definitely. You know, they're going to come through with it. I mean, it's Disney Plus. Like they, they know, they know, they're gonna come through. With it. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm here for these like classic '90s. I'd cartoon be more excited revivals. if it was just the regular cartoon, but 
Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see what's got coming up. Coming up. All right. You know what? I'll go ahead and, and insert myself uh, for this one. Um, speaking about uh, adaptations that have been recently announced. Um, this one was was another kind of big one that, for the most part, I think had a lot of uh, comic fans excited when it was announced. Um, and that was uh, earlier this month. Actually, I think not even a week, not even two weeks ago. But uh, the I'm sorry. It was announced that uh, Takiwa, I can never say it, Takawa Titi. There you go. Yeah. Takawa Titi. Close enough. Um, has <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Wait, what, what am I missing? What am no, I missing? No, Taika. Taika. Isn't it Taika Waititi? Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, no one's going to blame me for mispronouncing that. <laughs> Except like, for Cesar. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that would require Taika. Cesar to listen. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Here's the best part <laughs> is that only the Patreon subscribers. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to see me fuck this up on video. Oh, let <laughs> me just edit out the audio yep. and say it like this: that um, Taka Watiti. Wait, Taka, Taki, Taki, Taka. Help me out here one more time, Ashley. Help me out. Taika Watiti. Taika. 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 All right. Taika. It has been announced that Taka Watiti. <laughs> yeah, well, that's as good as it gets. Just keep moving. We're yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> it has been announced that Taika Waititi uh, has signed on to direct the first feature adaptation of Alejandro Jodorowsky and Mobius's best-selling graphic novel, which Man. apparently is like one of the uh, highest-selling sci-fi graphic novels of yeah. all time. The In Cal. Um, he's making a movie, ad a live-action movie adaptation alongside uh, French comic publisher Humanoids and then their producing partner, Primer Entertainment. Uh, YTT um, uh, is also co-writing the script for the project. Um, it'll be um, Humanoid's first foray in the film, which is pretty interesting considering that they have plenty of stories and, and uh, IP oh, yeah. and material if, that they could, you know, this add. This does up. well. I think we're going to see some crazy stuff. For sure. I mean, road. as far as like being a, as far as being a well of just like yeah. sci-fi content, just the Mobius stuff alone. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's a good point. That is a very good point. Uh, but he's teaming up with his frequent collaborators, uh, Jermaine, uh, Jermaine Clement, uh, oh. who's written um, or worked on What We Do in the Shadows, Flight of the Concords, Jermaine. and uh, Peter Jermaine. Warren, uh, Ghost Team in the History of Us. Um, for those of you uh, unaware, uh, just, you know, a uh, very high-level recap. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Ooh, sorry. I hope uh, he plays the lead. Jermaine is the, the dopey <laughs> <laughs> private investigator. Yeah. So for, uh, for those of you unaware, uh, the NCAL is an epic space opera that was created by Jodorowsky and Mobius. It was first published by the French comic publisher Humanoids in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It's centered on a P.I. John DeFool, which I think is a great name, uh, <laughs> who happens upon a mystical artifact known as the NCAL. It's a you know, classic object of great power. It's coveted by all the factions across the galaxy. Uh, DeFool learns that you know, the NCAL's powers and, and true purpose, and then him and a ragtag team crew of you know, your unlikely cohorts uh, they embark on this mission that begins as a, uh, you know, that begins as a, you know, t a typical mission to save the universe, but eventually kind of becomes like the spiritual journey for the for him and his team. They examine duality and the meaning of existence. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's one of the highest selling sci-fi graphic and novels. And just history. for the importance, it's like it's the roots of you know the cyberpunk genre. Oh yeah, and then like movies like Blade Runner. It's essentially kind of funny because it's like they're when the Dune project kind of went belly up this pretty much like a spite project him and mobius did it's like let's make a comic we can't make dune let's make this <laughs> yeah that's and right they, they, they repurposed uh, um if i'm remembering our mobius episode well it's like they repurposed a lot of stuff they were working on mm -hmm. during du um the dune yeah for in cal yeah so uh has anyone well, well before I, I go on more of the uh the information about the movie adaptation has anyone read in cal because i'll go ahead and admit i think i tried reading it early on maybe a, a few years ago um like many years ago actually and it, it was just at a time that i don't know it just wasn't for me at the time yeah but um i think after doing all that movies it's, research it's for that commitment. episode it's i'm here for it it's, yeah. it's not easy it's not like a casual read you know <laughs> it's it's pretty dense you know fiction hmm. um i've just read the uh first couple chapters like i had it in one of my heavy metals okay but i don't have the collection which is you know on the list of things to get Hmm. and get the whole thing and read it. Ashley, are you familiar with it? Yeah, I I read it um I feels like a long time ago. Like you said it's been out since it's been out since what? 
the seventies. Yeah. I feel like I read it in college or something like a long time ago. And I think I spent most of the time just looking at the artwork with Mobius. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, it's like, actually the math don't add up. You'd be be nine years old. Me and Joe Dorowski. (laughs) It was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said that, but it sounded like you said that the the artwork was what captivated you the most. Maybe not so much. Yeah. The story. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, for uh, sure, because they, it was hard to read, and then when you kind of get sick of reading it, you just start looking through the artwork yep. and kind of like get your story that way. That's what I did. I think that's what happened. Yeah. For, for some reason, it just wasn't connecting story wise. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a dense science fiction. So, it, like I said, it's not a casual read at all. You know, it's it's yeah. it's something you got to and you can't and it's easy like i'm i'm totally guilty of any comic i'm just guilty of just looking at pictures you know just right, i'm tired of this just look at these pretty pictures well look <laughs> i is smart now so i'm gonna give it another <laughs> shot <laughs> i'm gonna give it another shot for sure especially like you know after having done uh, our moby step so which you know i got second same shameless plug right here folks uh, if you haven't already mm. listened to our moby spotlight episode Please do yourselves a favor and give that a listen. Uh, Cesar, who is much more um, uh, prolific and, and more knowledgeable about uh, humanoids and, and, and Mobius and Jodorowsky than I am, he gives a great crash course into Mobius and what makes him a comic legend. And, and I think that'll make you much more excited for this news. Um, but, but to go back to the rest of this um, announcement, it does sound that uh, Jodorowsky, who I'll admit, I thought he passed away a few yeah. years ago, but apparently he's like 92. 90 years. Yeah, 92. 92. Still kicking. Gosh. Still kicking. Still, it sounds like still like very grouchy and in your face. Yeah. Um, he's pretty excited about uh, yeah. uh, Taki, but very Taki sharp, Watiti. still very sharp. Like in that, their <laughs> humanoids put out a little five minute video of him basically giving, you know, his blessing for this movie to be made because he's like, even says, you know, if I was 40 and this was happening, you know, I'd be, I'd be depressed, you know, they're stealing my work, but you know, I'm 92, I can't yeah. do this. And, you know, and, and, as a director you know it's it becomes your vision you take the material and you make it your own and like said and he says he's he pretty much said this is the perfect this is the right person for the job so he getting his blessing is like you know the the uh, the cherry on the the sunday so it's a really cool little video it's it's only a few minutes from humanoids and um what tt talks about reading it and like saying he gets something different every time he reads it and it's such a things that he it's such a when he reads it he's like sometimes i read it i i know less than when i did coming in sometimes i read it i get i see things i didn't see before so it's i'm excited to give it a a, a reread for sure you can tell he's really you know you know he's really into the uh, source material so that's really cool too um and uh, and it turns so i mean obviously you know it's it's still pretty uh early on news there is no information as far as like release date or or how (laughs) the theaters and whatnot um but primer entertainment which is like i said humanoids uh producing partner they are looking to adapt a few other projects based on a catalog of ip by artists and writers such as john cassidy uh milo manara which i, I think oh, would God, be, that's gonna be porno <laughs> <laughs> which be very sexy oh content. my goodness that's um, spicy folks mark wade is on this list as well which i think is pretty interesting um i, I don't know if, if mark wade has done work with uh, um, uh humanoids or, or heavy metal but if they're looking at adapting any of Mark Wade's creator own work, like Irredeemable or um, that'd be cool. Uh, I always forget the, the name of the other one, Indestructible or uh, I forget the name of them. But if it's irrede- Irredeemable, then I think that'll be pretty cool as well. So, um, yeah, Taka Watiti doing uh, uh, Incal. It just seems like a perfect fit. And if Joe Dorowski is giving it the thumbs up and calling yeah. him the one for it, yeah. then I mean, you can't ask for nothing more. Mm-hmm. Um, Ed, oh. we've been saving. Uh, I've been saving your your story <laughs> segment for last because I think it'll tie into um, our fistful of comics segment really well. But it sounds like new comic fans mm. were not the happiest shop goers this week. Well, why is that? Well, Diamonds had a uh, really rough year, so basically <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they began their ad, they, like <laughs> they. Here's the thing. I, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go I'm sorry to interrupt, but. Diamond managed to survive, and really the comic industry as a whole managed to survive the pandemic, shops closing down, you know, shops closing down, shops not getting their books, and, you know, just like the whole supply chain kind of early supply chain issues. Diamond survived that, I feel like, kind of no problem. Mm -hmm. But in this, now I won't say like post-COVID world, but it... After the, the, I think the thick of it, this is where all the problems were starting to come. Yeah, well, I think even last year, DC 
pretty much pieced out and they got their own dis- distribution. And then back in March, you know, Marvel is going through Penguin Random House, which is a huge publisher. And like, so they already before that, you know, they're the exclusive for Marvel, but they also distribute, you know, uh, graphic novels from DC, Dark Horse, Archie, IDW. Um, so like, so they've already kind of had their toe into the, the comic business. So like I said, this looks pretty hostile, but outside of that recently, this last weekend, they had a, uh, a ransomware attack, malware attack, basically shut down their website, messed up all the orders for this last week and possibly next week. So like I said, on the 11th diamond, you know, regained some access to their website. They're saying that the client data and financial info was not stored on the systems that was the system that was hacked. Um, but their email systems down, they're using a third party. Like I said, they couldn't process any reorders until I think this weekend, if, if that's possible. So if you went in and wanted to order something, you couldn't Damn. like this week, I wanted to order something and it's like, yeah, sorry. The, Damn. You, they were saying like, yeah, their website's down. They got hacked. I'm like, what? This is like, uh, and working in, co- in a comic store, Diamond's always full of excuses and terrible <laughs> to deal with. But this is, I thought it was like, are you kidding me? Or is this like, you know, someone says something racist on Twitter and then they say their account got hacked. <laughs> 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 it wasn't me. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, there, it's like I said, there's, you know, he was, you know, I talked to, uh, you know, got the comic shop about it. It was a pretty, pretty crazy. Like every, only Marvel and DC came in, which my conspiracy hat thinks this is like a, yeah, for sure. they just totally hanging hired. random house some, teaming up with Marvel <laughs> yeah. and DC to crush the competition. <laughs> some <laughs> bitter X diamond pro went to programming school. <laughs> 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 like I'll get them. Oh shit. It gets deeper. He must be pissed off because diamond didn't pay up tuition. Like they promised in their benefits. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. They no, probably no. shut down their IT Ashley, team. where were you this week, Ashley? Oh. Been all week, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're on the, the, the department. Of, uh, uh, <laughs> I do feel bad. I didn't go to the comic shop this week because as soon as I saw that image wasn't coming in, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of no point. And like, it was like, was it a couple weeks ago the image stuff got messed up? For Yeah, know, delayed, or, yeah. It delayed or something. Oh. I usually go on Saturdays, but gotcha. so, yeah, not it's today. Like it's... And like I said, it's been a, just a just a, a total mess. And like I said, and as much as we, or at least I bag on Diamond for, you know, their general lack of quality, but you know, there's a lot of publishers <laughs> that still need them. You know, because like yeah. it's, it's even though Marvel and DC they make up probably seventy percent, eighty percent of the comics market. You know, there's smaller publishers that still need distributors. So it's they do still, you know, play an important role. You know, until mm-hmm. you know, everyone else decides to figure out their own thing. But, you know, they, they're still, you know, they're still distributing a lot of, you know, indie titles and, you know, even bigger indies like, you know, Image. I don't even consider Image like an indie anymore. No, not at but, all. Uh, it but is even, the big three, in my opinion. Yeah. So they're like the third, but they're still, you know, behind Marvel and DC. There's it's a distant third, but mm. it's still big enough, you know. So it's yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah, it's just crazy times for uh so like i said this week and next week guys you know, i don't if you have something coming out or you know just uh be aware of that's going on actually uh, i want you to help me paint a picture of of the this type of like impact pre uh covid world uh, imagine you working back at the comic shop happily working back at the comic shop right no. loving every minute of it <laughs> imagine this oh. malware attack happening to diamond and this is like pre you know penguin random house uh, uh distributing books for for marvel and and whatever dc's got i think lunar or something lunar, yeah. um imagine diamond going down for a day to two and then it uh, suddenly becomes like i don't know when it's going to come back up how chaotic and and just fucked up would it be how 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 much would it fuck up your day if this was to happen so this is what it's like even though i don't work at a comic shop like this is what's stressing me out is you're going to go through two weeks of having like lighter orders. And then when everything goes through, they're going to have a massive order that they have to put away, put everything up on the wall, put everything in Mm -hmm. everyone's pull list for like two weeks of just missing all of these comics. Yeah. And there's a thing where they can't even look up the invoices. There's no tracking information because of just disappointed faces all day. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're the face, so you, you're the one that gets all the heat because they can't yell at the diamond people. You have to apologize <laughs> yeah. on their behalf. It's like, you know, oh, people yeah. yelling at the gas station guy for the yeah. gas prices. Like, what's he got to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yelling at this guy for it. I guess the, the thing that, that definitely uh, uh, makes me cringe a lot is the fact that it sounds like it, it, if it's really kind of up to the um, the shop themselves to figure out what didn't I get in? What yeah. did I order? What do I need to reorder? Who's yeah. missing what, right? Like, it yeah. really, like, the onus bec- falls on the yeah, shop owner. Because, like, from what I've read and what, and it could be, you know, it could be misinformed, but from what I read, it's like they can't, like, there's no tracking information for the stuff that was missed. There's no mm-hmm. invoice information. It's like, who knows when it's going to come in, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, so they can't say, oh, don't worry, man, it's going to be in two weeks. You don't know. Mm. You're just going to have to shrug your shoulders. It's frustrating. Damn. Um, Ashley, you got anything to add to that? No, I, well, I'm just curious. Did, I wonder if they um, like got charged for anything and it's not showing up yet, or well, if they sure just they skipped that whole sure. thing. I'm you, sure they yeah, the money. You know that. That's, that's hard for smaller <laughs> shops to get yeah. charged for the big invoice, sure. and then you don't have the stuff to sell. Yeah, but yeah, they're still taking that money out of your account. <laughs> your diamonds. You think? Yeah, money. they probably are. You're right. You no, know, you know, you know, they are. Yeah. They, they're kind <laughs> yeah. Of, they're they're kind of ruthless. Yeah, you so, know they are. I, I guess the lesson, <laughs> I guess the lesson to take from this one, uh, uh, Short Box Nation, is be extra kind to your uh, <laughs> local comic shop and then the it's employees. Not their fault. It's not a today. shop, a shop by shop thing. Like sometimes it happens. Sometimes a shop, like we've gotten stuff from other shops, orders from other shops, come yeah. to our store. You know, when I was working, so. It's this is way this is international. This is going like who knows overseas what that's like. If this so. was if this was a movie, that scene <laughs> right there would be Ed running into an office with a disheveled papers, tie, <laughs> looking crazy, clearly not sleeping. It's an international incident. <laughs> so there's nothing we can do. <gasps> Thank you, Ed. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like we, we've covered all of our uh, uh, news articles and, and announcements that we wanted to to share. So it sounds like with the news out of the way, uh, it's time for our first. Regular recurring segment, Shortbox Nation. I'm sorry. Uh, with the news out of the way, it's time for our first regular recurring segment. Shortbox Nation, it's time to make a choice. And if you've been listening long enough, you know you've only got two options when it comes to this next segment. You can either have a mouthful of tea or a fistful of comics. <laughs> fistful of comics is the part of the show for all you Wednesday warriors who loyal who loyally visit your local comic shops every week. Think of this as a show and tell highlighting only the best new comics in the shelves right now in hopes of making it that much easier for you to grab a fistful of comics yourself next time that you visit your shop. This segment is sponsored by Gotham City Limit, Jacksonville's premier shop for comics, toys, collectibles, and more. If you live in the area or ever find yourself passing through Jacksonville, stop by the shop on Southside Boulevard and tell them the short box sent you. Um, Ashley, you've agreed to uh, uh, highlight a new comic book alongside, uh, along with me. Um, I was going to share oh. mine, and then uh, I'll, I'll save the best for last, and you can come in uh, right behind, right? Um, I want to go ahead and highlight thing number one this oh, week. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, if you, did you get it? Yeah, I got it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So it's written by the legendary crime fiction writer Walter Mosley. Uh, he's the creator of the hard-boiled detective Easy Rollins, uh, who starred in famous books like Devil in a Blue Dress, Red Death, uh, the comic is uh, drawn by Tom Riley, who's, who's new to me. I'm, I'm not familiar with his work, but I, I loved it. Um, and colorist Jordi Belair, who I think really shines um, in this first issue. So the first issue is part of a story arc called The Next Big, the Next Big Thing Part 1. I'm not sure how long the series will run. I think it, last time I checked, it was like four or five issue uh, limited run. So, uh, But the solicitation, I, I thought, says it kind of perfectly. Um, the next big thing will remind audiences why The Thing is one of the most popular and beloved characters in the history of comics, which I think it's safe to say when it comes to comic fans, uh, uh, fandom, and, and love for the, you know, the, the ever uh, love and blue-eyed thing, <laughs> it, it's strong. He's got a cult following, and it's you know, very easy to, I think, say that he is probably everyone's favorite member of the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll try to... Uh, um, recap the, the story as best as I can. It's definitely like pretty, it's pretty out there in my, in my opinion, but uh, it's it, like a day in the life, but just everything goes wrong for this yeah, poor guy. For sure, for Aww. sure. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it, which I mean, which y- you hate to see it happen to someone as level as the thing, but yeah. that's why you love it. it. Love him so much is that he's always going through, 
you know, just a rough day. Aside from looking like a monster, yeah. you know, everything just seems to kind of go. Uh, he gets even maced. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy. Yeah, it finds uh, this particular uh, uh, comic finds the thing having to deal with these <laughs> very particular scenarios that put him in, in not only trouble for the law, but just kind of like, you know, at odds with his friends. Um, and of course, it's not of his own doing per se. He's actually been cursed uh, by this this demon, right? Like mm-hmm. this kind of like Grim Reaper looking uh, character. Yeah, they uh, put like some kind of weird hex on him. Yeah, so he's just the, the bad luck. He's yeah, just, yeah. So uh, uh, you know, uh, he's looking to bring some chaos into the life of, of Ben. Uh, but Ben also has to deal with his fiance Alicia Masters giving him back his ring because of his erratic yeah, behavior. She's not not looking good. She's like hanging out with some that French dude with a scarf. Yeah, <laughs> like man, <laughs> and always a French dude with I a scarf d- that'll take your girl. And I Beware. do, and I do like there's like kind of this. Almost like the superhero drunk tank he gets thrown into with Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> I did love that scene. That, that was oh, funny. So awesome. <laughs> that was really funny. But uh, he just, yeah, Ben Grimm's just having a really shitty day yeah. in this comic book. Uh, and, and you know what? It just kind of, for, at his lowest low, um, he ends up kind of signing up for this really shady uh, futuristic dating app. Um, oh, yeah. and, and the story kind of ends there. But, you know, there's kind of a big cliffhanger that leads in issue two. Uh, but the art is uh. super moody. Um, which makes sense considering that Walter Mosley, you know, is known for his um, hard-boiled detective stories. Uh, the, the colors by Jordi Belair, I, I just got to champion how, how good they look. But yeah. it feels like sexy jazz music from, like, 90s crime <laughs> movies should be playing the whole time. Some, that you, like, that sultry this. saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of style. Yeah. Um, good jumping on point. You don't really need to know much about the character at no. all. I mean, uh, I think... In the beginning, they do preface it that, hey, this, as far as continuity and where this takes place, it's somewhere in the middle of, um, you know, the things kind of Fantastic Four career. Yeah. So clearly they're, you know, it's still the original members of Fantastic Four. They're still doing their thing. And uh, it's right before he marries Alicia Masters, at least in this current uh, continuity. Yeah, and it's cool because it's like you get to, even just in a few pages, you get to see what like a lonely life he, this guy has. You know? Yes. And it's it's yeah. just... It's just really well done. It's like a fun, and like I said, I'm glad it's a few issues, you know, <laughs> but it's a really, you know, fun title to jump onto. Yeah, for sure. So that is my um, new comic recommendation. Um, Ashley, I, I will turn it over to you. Like I said, saving the best for last. Uh, <laughs> what, do, what do you got for us this week? Um, so I've got uh, New Burn by uh, Chip Zdarsky and Jacob Phillips. Mm, that. Hmm. Um, I had to get it digitally. Um but it was it was really good. So it, it looks like the the cover looks like the Brew Baker Phillips stuff, mm-hmm. um, oh, and I guess uh, Jacob Phillips <laughs> is Sean uh, Sean Phillips' son, and he definitely looks like a you know like a student yeah. of his. Um, so he did the artwork, the colors, lettering, everything, and uh, it has this detective thing, and it's like it goes around. Um, the guy's name is Easton Newburn, and he's like a detective for like the gangs like the Italian mafia, like the Russians, the Yakuza, he's like their detective. Um, so he's kind of like this morally corrupt dude that used to be a cop, but he's also kind of like an untouchable because he works for all these different gangs. So none of them will ever mess with him. Um, it was just a really cool setup. Um, it had like a little story in it, but it was mostly just kind of learning who this guy is. Um, and I'm probably like a little biased because it's Chip <laughs> Zdarsky. But I, I thought it was great. I will say one thing about, well, for, for starters, you could have just said this book was just a classic uh, Brew Baker Phillips joint, and I would have believed you because yeah. that sounds exactly it looks like one like, of their like hard covers. Yeah, exactly. Out. Yeah, um, and it looks like it. Yeah. Secondly, uh, Jacob Phillips um, also did a series uh, last year. It was called That Texas Blood. It was, mm. it was with uh, Chris Condon. Um, that are that I really enjoyed uh, a lot as well. So mm-hmm. I to mention that's that. crazy. It's the sun because I've I was to do an interview with Frank Qual- uh, Frank quietly. His son does his colors. So that's pretty crazy. You know, keep it in the family. Yeah. That makes so. sense. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now I, I gotta check that out. That's that sounds like a really interesting premise. Nepotism. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Ed, for, for explaining. That. <laughs> that's good. All right, folks. So those are our new comic picks. Uh, for this week, normally we, we have some suggestions uh, uh, from Ben. Um, I, I dropped the ball. I, I didn't get to um, to them in time. Uh, if he sends me those, I'll I'll go ahead and splice. Uh, I'll <laughs> I'll go ahead and uh, uh, cut that in here in some way. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. So check. So give those recommendations a shot next time you visit a comic shop or next time you're looking for something new to flip through. 
Uh, next up is my favorite part of the show. It's listener emails in the Champion Season segment. But first, we're going to go on a quick, we're going to go on a short music break. For today's soundtrack, it'll be a repeat joint by Mecca the Marvelous. I premiered this instrumental last week, but I've had it on repeat since then. It's, it's the instrumental for his new single, Backseat. It's also got an accompanying music video that I'll link in the show notes. In the meantime, relax, and we'll be right back with emails and our current uh, obsessions this week. All right? Stay tuned. Sweet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just need to go grab some water, and I'll be good to go. Break time. Yeah. Ashley, we'll be back. <laughs> Is that the skunk ape hat? Yeah, it is. Nice. I need to go to that place. Oh, it's it's the worst. <laughs> it's just like the cheat. It's like the most Florida thing you've ever oh, seen yeah. in your life. No, you said it's just like a small little cabin and you go on. Like yeah, a you can yeah. pay like five dollars to hold like a baby alligator with its mouth taped <laughs> shut. Um, they've got like just buckets of like alligator claws. <sighs> it's ridiculous. They have a skunk ape. Um, what do you call that? What's like, it's like a footprint in that white stuff. Like in the plaster. Like a like mold. Big, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Done. But yeah, so. All right, I'll be, I'm going to let my, I'm going to get my cat out of the room. Give me one second. Okay. Over here. Come. Sit. Sit. Who's that? Who's that? All right. Who's there? You want this? Sit. Yo, how's that book coming along? Oh, the kids' book? Mm -hmm. Um, I am trying to have it all done by, or all drawn by next weekend. And then I have to start coloring it. Um, I, I don't know. It's just a lot, <laughs> but he's about to start, um, the Kickstarter. So I'll be able to like share it and stuff Hell yeah! like with yeah. images. So I'm, I'm super, super excited. This is definitely like the big, well, besides the, the image book with Sarah, this is like the biggest thing I've ever done. Hell yeah. I'm happy for you. Congrats. Thanks. Oh. Just got to make it through the rest of the year. I got you. You got any like thing lined up as far as like um, uh, holidays or anything? Are you going out of town? No. Well, I actually I had to talk to you because um, Josh's birthday is that weekend of the Jim Lee episode. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, but we're not going out of town for Christmas, but we might go out of town for that. Um, but I'll let you know when it gets closer, but we, he just has family coming in. We're not traveling anywhere. Okay. Um, yeah, let me know either. I, I can try to like move it out, readjust, or, um, you know, if, if you want to skip that one, that's fine too. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh no. What's going on? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking holidays. Ah, holidays. holidays. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me make sure I pull up this. Come one. here. Come here. Are you going somewhere? You going out of town for Christmas? We might go somewhere for Josh's birthday weekend. Oh, when but I don't know. It's a um December fifteenth. Oh wow! I know it's like right before Christmas. It's such a pain to get him stuff. Double gift. Nah, yeah, exactly. You get him one <laughs> one nice big thing. ass gift, or you him, um, <laughs> one giant Loki statue. If he doesn't like it, <laughs> <laughs> you'll just sell it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's T Mix at? All right, here we go. Uh, da, da, da. All right. And... Sandor, do not. Uh oh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah, oh, no. Sandor. <laughs> Damn, Sandor. <laughs> that dog failed like obedience school. <laughs> it knew that. Uh, it knew that it was gonna. Sandor knew that All he right. was gonna make his um his uh, uh, short box debut. No, he made yeah. his debut in pog form. Pog. <laughs> All right, down All right. to zero animals now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. Well, here we go. All 
All right, Shorebox Nation, once again, the music you just heard was by Mecca and the Marvelous. That was the instrumental to his new single, Backseat, if you liked it as much as I do. It is available on Spotify and Apple Music, so show your support by streaming it or check out his band camp. There's a link for that in our show notes. Uh, emails, let's go ahead and hear what our listeners got to say because we love giving them a spotlight as well. Uh, we've got one email this week, and it comes from T-Mix, our most recent inductee into the Shortbox Elite. He became a Shortbox patron last month. And uh, he is someone that is slowly becoming one of my most anticipated listeners to hear from (laughs) because he gives Cesar so much shit. Uh, uh, And here is what we got. So let's hear what he's got to share with us this week. Uh, His email is titled John Stewart, and he writes, Yo, (laughs) Um, I'm I'm enjoying uh, my my yo and my (laughs) announcement, you know, uh, uh, becoming a thing of short box (laughs) lore. Uh, But he continues, uh, What up, short box? I feel like an asshole for not saying thanks for the welcome package. It was great. <laughs> Heroes Reborn was hysterical. It's Botter's favorite thing. Marvel writing DC characters. Green Lantern <laughs> Year One Volume Two was great because it tied into the John Stewart episode, which I love the official and after party episodes on John Stewart. The Bruce Team universe was jumping off point and the comic was probably meant to say was my jumping on point in the comic, so John Stewart was my first Green Lantern. It's great to learn about his comic book history and I'm looking forward to reading some more of his comic books. Going back to Je- Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, it pains me that I have to correct y'all considering the Justice League Unlimited's pilot episode. Um, John isn't friends with Barry Allen. Justice League and Justice League Unlimited's Flash is Wally West. Oh. Go back to Dan Garian Invasion. Clark Kent, Wally West, Bruce Wayne. I chose to blame Botter. <laughs> I choose to blame Botter. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I just gave him credit for giving Cesar <laughs> shit, and uh, so far he's got oh, nobody's things, safe. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of the fearless leader, during the after show, I legit thought Botter was going to pick Immortal Hulk as a spooky season. I'm 15 <laughs> chapters into Uzumaki, and yeah, it's fucked up. I tried <laughs> to warn you guys. I tried. Uh, then he writes some, uh, a sentence in Spanish uh, oh. for Cesar, because uh, Cesar normally reads our emails, but he's not here oh. today. Uh, so I'm going to try my best. Did and you Google Translate it? Yeah, I'm going to fuck it up. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good idea. Uh, hold on, let me try translating this, because I don't want to <laughs> fuck this up. Uh, so, wow. Google... I can't wait to hear the Spanglish version <laughs> of what this is supposed to be. All right, it comes out to uh, uh, Cesar hurts me that you're a Boricua bur- bur- who doesn't like reggaeton. <laughs> to the great Puchica, is that is that I think so. Puchica, you what that whore? Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Google Translate, so it's terrible. Oh my <laughs> what? Yeah. He calls Cesar so a whore. Basically, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Puchita. I know. I learned some Spanish today. Yeah, that is fucking funny. Wow. Um, but and I'm sure I slaughtered. I'm sure between me and uh, Google Translate, <laughs> we definitely slaughtered that. Uh, but he also, uh, T Mix continues to write. Uh, you like what you like, though. But yo, Judas Priest, and no one mentioned Phil Lamar yelling Judas Priest. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Botter, for the champion. That Anthony Mackie episode was great. I think he's talking about my champion for um, the Quest Love podcast. Mm. I've rambled enough, so I'll leave y'all with my new champion. It's pretty new, but I think for music heads, it's a must listen. <laughs> Next spin is a great podcast oh, diving into come different. On. Ge- <laughs> if this Cesar, is collusion. You know, like if Cesar was here, you know he'd be fucking oh complaining about this. <laughs> Hold on, I, I'm going to finish it because I appreciate this <laughs> for obvious reasons. Next spin is a great Jesus podcast Christ. diving into different genres of music through a lot of vi- through a love of vinyls. I highly recommend episode five, music from the African diaspora. Uh, no mames, Cesar. No mames. Hasta la próxima, putos y Ashley. Uh, keep it geeky, T mix. P.S. Botter, you got to get Yaya and Cesar together to talk about reggaeton. Um, oh, no. Ashley, do you want me to uh, Google translate that last line? <laughs> oh, it sounds. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Uh, well, that last line translates to "Don't suck, Cesar. Don't suck." Until next time, bitches and Ashley. <laughs> oh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> You're a. Turned out better than I thought it would. Yeah. You know, I am here. You're a bitch exempt. Now, <laughs> I want to go ahead and apologize <laughs> to all of our uh, Spanish-speaking uh, 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 listeners if I yeah, have uh, offended have or, or absolutely <laughs> ruined any of that translate. It's, it's all Google Translate's fault. Cesar normally does yeah. a fantastic job translating and reading that. But um, I do want to say, yo, T-Mix, thank you for uh, shamelessly plugging in my other podcast, oh, Next Spin, into this podcast because, you know, I always feel bad doing that. But, yo, he did it. He so. doesn't feel bad <laughs> at all. <laughs> this is- <laughs> so if you're a music head, I will say, if you're a music head, here's my shameless plug number three for those keeping count. Uh, check out Next Spin if you love uh, uh, talks about music genres and vinyl. And then um, the other thing I'll, cha- uh, I'll mention, uh, I'll, I'm sorry, the other thing I'll address, T-Mix, is that you 
seemed to enjoy uh, the Quest Love podcast and then the recommendation I gave um, uh, a few uh, weeks ago. The Anthony Mackie episode is great. I want to go ahead and, and encourage you to listen to these other interviews that um, that were fantastic. Uh, they had, um, oh my God, uh, Jack White on the show. Great interview. That dude is so cool. I thought he was going to be a douche, but he was like really cool. <laughs> and it does, uh, it does seem like that right and, and yeah. i mean that might be my own perception and interpretation <laughs> of like the little bit i've seen of him but their interview with him with him was great like he is truly like a musician's musician oh, like yeah. you know it has a great love of music and respect the snoop dogg interview was awesome um i, I feel like we all have an idea of who Snoop Dogg is, you know, wh whether it be, you know, Martha Stewart's best friend. I know Snoop uh, Lion. Yeah, I don't Snoop know, Lion. Pick I don't know any Snoop any variation, but um, <laughs> the interview that, that they had they did with him was so enlightening and, and getting to hear like, you know, uh, Snoop kind of drop like the commercial facade that he has or the character uh, was fantastic. So I'll recommend oh, cool. those two uh, to you, T-Mix. And thank you so much for, for writing in. I'm glad that you enjoyed uh, the um, uh, Patreon welcome package. I'm glad they enjoyed the John Stewart episode, and I, I guess we, d you know, I guess we did fuck up. Maybe uh, it, you know, maybe the Flash and Justice League Unlimited is Wally West. I thought it was Barry Allen this whole time. No, he's but right. I think he's right. Yeah, yeah pretty sure. Right. Well, you you, get, you win a no prize, T Mix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that is. Uh, so that's our emails for today. Uh, I want to encourage anyone listening that you know that has a that has a thought to share or, or some uh, shit talking that they want to get off their <laughs> chest. <laughs> Or even just like a champion that you guys want to share as well. We always encourage our listeners to, to join in on the show, join in on the fun. Feel free to write us a short email to read next episode. You can do so by writing an email, sending it to our inbox at the showboxjacks at gmail.com. Um, or you can even uh, send us a voicemail too. You can go to speakpipe.com slash the short box. Leave a, a short voicemail. Please keep it short and we'll play that next episode. But like I said, that's our email for today. So it's time to wrap up this episode with our last but definitely, not, but definitely not least, regular recurring segment. It's time to champion some great entertainment options from other media. Kids, grab your coins, because only the best of the best get talked about in this segment. Champion season. Champion season is the part of the show where we highlight other worthwhile entertainment and recommendations that we feel deserves your attention. These could be much more than comics, but include movie picks, TV series, books, or video games, and anything else we're hyped on this week. The segment is brought to you by Black Hive Tattoo, Jacksonville's premier appointment-only custom tattoo studio. If you're searching for a group of talented artists who will work with you to bring your comic culture ideas to life, yo, look no further. Go to blackhivetattoo.com and sign up for the newsletter to find out when they're taking new project requests. Um, Ed, I'm gonna, Ed, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna look to you, man. I'm gonna have you kick us off for champion season. What do you want to champion? I got today? a couple. I will, uh, I will, you know, I will, I will follow up the music recommendation. There is a great interview, and I don't think I championed this, but uh, Mark Marin, WTF, he did an interview, I believe, late last year with Bootsy Collins, one of my favorite oh. musicians, and it is awesome. He's uh, pretty much what you'd expect him to be, and he has some fantastic james brown stories it's a great interview uh because he just released an album uh, last year the power of the one and he explains what that means although you know like i said if you want some great james brown stories this is a great interview to have it's a fun interview it's uh not too serious but yeah it's, it's a cool one and then another recent more recent interview is a uh, comic uh comic book uh kayfabe they just interviewed mike mignola oh that's uh, right yeah, yeah i did see that and what's really cool is that he, they basically, they reviewed like the, uh, I think the right hand of doom hmm. previously. And then Mike heard it. And then basically they copped on the interview with them and said, like basically said they did a great job, you know, going over his work. So that's a cool interview. Very, very low key, humble guy, despite all his fantastic success that he's had, huh. you know, so he, he just, it's funny. Like, you know, he'll talk about drawing Hellboy. It's like, you know, I'm, it's like I just write stories where I don't have to draw, where I don't include things I have to draw. Like, this, <laughs> this is not going to be an airplane or a car. He's not going to be writing. Hellboy's not going to be writing in a car or on a plane. <laughs> and it's just like he's very, very self-effacing. It's a very fun interview. Just kind of a great, crazy career. Being roommates with like Art Adams. Damn. And, yeah. Just like so we always knew Art was going to be the superhero guy, but I had and he started as an inker. Um, like I said, it's it's a cool, you know, basically goes over his entire career. It's a fun interview, so I definitely recommend those two. 
cartoonist kayfabe uh, anytime that seeing that they had Mike Mignola on the show just just made me happy for them because I know how much like oh, yeah. they love not only Mike Mignola but like comic book like comic artist artist right like, yeah and I think Mike Mignola definitely fits that that category um so that's awesome yeah I got yeah, and what's good with like check that out you know like Jim and Ed is like they're fans you know they're dude super big fans. nerds and but they're also creators so they can. Mm-hmm. They can go over all the technique. They can go over all the yeah. process stuff. They're really good at that. And I think Jim kind of keeps Ed's kind of weird character things he does. He's, you know, it's very snarky. I think Jim yeah. kind of is like the nice balanced sure, guy, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, their interviews are great. They've had a couple. They've had one with another artist I like, Dave Cooper. They had an interview with him. Um, they have a couple, they've been on a roll. With some Didn't they? Uh, I want to say the latest episode, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, they're – they were like uh, dissecting the Neil Gaiman versus Todd McFarlane um, uh, lawsuit. Yeah, or, I haven't listened or to something that yet, like that. Yeah, that's crazy. Because I've seen, um, I, I, I guess, I had seen clips of of that floating around like this week, where it's like Todd McFarlane like shirtless on the like on a stand on a oh. podium like talking to the mic Todd, and this is... Peter David looking. You know, it was like, um, oh, oh yeah, it, it was that's a, for their debate. Yeah, that's they had a debate. Oh, that's right about I, like you know creator rights and things like got that. It. And yeah, he okay, came so, in like a robe when like boxing trunks and like <laughs> mcfarlane was out of control uh, well yeah. <laughs> the, the image the picture i seen which i guess it was more so like a meme than anything yeah. it was uh tom mcfarlane on the left like you know shirtless yeah. kind of like you know uh looking all cool <laughs> backwards hat i think and then peter david you know looking like peter david like, you know your and dad it, <laughs> yeah and it said uh, uh uh on the todd mcfarlane side it was like what comic fans think they who who ta- i'm sorry who comic fans think they are and then on the Peter David <laughs> side, who comic fans really are? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. I can't wait if they and I know they've done, they've worked with them. And Rob, I know they're he's a fan of their stuff. I'm waiting for this. I don't know if I have to see him if they've ever done like a Rob Liefeld interview. Oh, well, uh, cartoons K Fape. Yeah, no, for sure they've definitely done. They've done, I think they've had. They've, they've done, interviewed him. Yes. Oh man, I think all they're missing is like. Well, I mean, if I'm just looking at like the three uh, uh, big image founders, uh, I think they're missing just Jim Lee. Uh, they've had Todd McFarlane on. They've they've interviewed Rob Leefield as well. Him. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but good good champion, Zed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ashley, what are you going to champion today? So I've got two. Um, speaking of Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement, um, what we do in the Shadow season three just finished up, and I don't know. Ed, have you been watching it? Not the new season. I love the show. Okay. I like. The yeah. Movie. I like the movie when it came out. The, uh, the oh, I've probably movie. seen that movie like a hundred times. And when they did the show, I was like, I like the people in it, but it's a show. You know, I was like, but it's they totally changed it, and it's mm-hmm. yeah, the show. I've just watched the I think the first season, so I need to catch up. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get to the second season as Haley Joe Osmond in it. <laughs> oh God. Um, in this too. <laughs> he, it's funny. So it, it just like um. Window. It just has like those <laughs> laugh out loud moments. Like it's one of the only shows I can think of where I'm watching it and then it'll just make me laugh like out of nowhere, just out loud, really, you know, it's just good. Um, so that just finished up. And then I finally watched A Quiet Place 2, oh. which I was waiting because the first one was so good. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to be able to like capture that. I but um, I, I liked it even better than the first one. It was amazing. Really, she's this is basically her with a baby, trying to keep the yeah from it, the aliens. Pretty like, much there. like <laughs> yeah, pretty much takes place right after the first movie. Oh wow, damn! It just kind of gives you like a little insight into like how everything got started, and then it just takes you right back. It's, it's kind of it was like so good. Silly a premise. In retrospect, that first one really set that Hell tension yeah. like right at the beginning. Well said, like, yeah. You, okay, it's terrifying this yeah. is the world i'm in okay i get it you know they they just they didn't waste any time so okay sound these sound monsters are gonna come eat me <laughs> you know if yeah. i'm on a twig so okay we got it no, just running. think yeah like it's terrifying like no dogs like my dogs would be gone in 10 seconds gone. they would like bark the second they saw one of those things <laughs> and and i and I think that the first one ends with her giving birth to her, her newfound child or her, her new child. And then the movie kind of ends in that regard. Well, so I, I remember leaving thinking about all the ways a newborn, you know, oh infant my baby would you so know, scary. Ruin, don't they like, do some day. kind of like, didn't they do like some kind of radio oh. waves to like 
fight them off? I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen it. To like keep their armor open so they can shoot them. But then they have like that. They had it in the first movie, that weird little like yeah. coffin thing. They stick the baby in when it yeah, cries. That's right, that's right. Oh, it's, it's like stealing coffin. a cooler. I'm surprised it's, that has it. It gives, it's like anxiety. Yeah. I'm but, surprised that movie, uh, I'm surprised that no coffin baby coffins around. Hasn't been made, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, introducing dark. the new baby coffin. I've seen <laughs> in a quiet place. Yeah. Babies crying, bumming you out. <laughs> Shut Put him in the coffin. Baby up. <laughs> Shut the up. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what it was about Quiet Place Two, is that it came out so much sooner than I thought we were gonna get it. I remember like seeing mm. like uh, a trailers for, or um, uh, advertising for it, and I thought it was just like, hey, it's coming soon. It's coming in the next few months. But I missed it because my dumb ass was like, oh, it's gonna be here next year. And I was like, nah, it was, it was in theaters for a hot minute. Yeah. Um, is it streaming anywhere? Was that before the COVID though? Didn't it come out right before that? Or oh, that's a good question. Maybe that's what threw me off. That probably actually. How, how did you? Is it available on streaming? I just so I rented it on Amazon oh. Prime, but I think I'm just gonna buy it now. And it also has um Killian Murphy in it, who's done like so many good science fiction movies that you just forget that he's in because he's like the Peaky Blinders guy, but he uh -huh. was in um, like Sunshine and 28 Days Later. Like he's really good in these like apocalyptic, like disaster movies. Hmm. Okay. Those are good. All right. Definitely yeah, recommend. Yeah. I'll give that a watch then for sure. All right. Uh, Ashley, did you have anything else? Or, no, that's uh, it. Oh, there's okay, bet. Um, I've only got one um, and, and in true uh, Botter fashion. This is a, a, an old ass, uh, an old ass piece of content, but um, Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain, oh. which came out in 2015. <laughs> so I'm, I'm six years <laughs> late. Um, I but, haven't played it, so. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm still I've, playing I've, Sons of Liberty. I've Jesus. had, <laughs> wow, two? <laughs> still rocking yeah, with the PS2. time, Zed. Um, my DVD player stuff. That's <laughs> antiquated, too. Well, and, and in all fairness, I bought this one. I'm a to set it up. I'm a huge Metal Gear Solid fan. It's probably like my favorite video game franchise, if not game of all time. Behind, I think Street Fighter is safe to say. But um, I, I've so I've purchased every single one that's come out, and I've had this game since it came out in 2015. I just remember playing it for like an hour and being so put off by like this whole new mechanic. It's mm. open world. Um, wow. The the it's like extensive option menus and the controls just felt so much different from previous iterations. I just it, it just turned me off and I just didn't have an open mind as far as giving it a shot. So it just stayed in its case for you know six years. And then um, <laughs> I recently went on the uh, Metal Gamers podcast and I had I had brought it up in some roundabout way and they highly recommended it. And then of course uh, Ryan Paul Thompson from Gam, um, I was talking to him about maybe starting it up. And he was like, "Yo, as a Metal Gear Solid fan, you got to see it to the end. You got to give this game a shot." So um, I've been playing it for the last, I want to say, about month now, and it's more so like an addiction at this point. Like oh I, I am so into this game. Um, I've clocked in like more than I think 80, 90 hours into oh it. God. And if I'm not doing podcast, quit his job. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> close. I'm pretty close. I'm on. Uh, I think the this game is has like some World of Warcraft. Type I think of commitment, dude. It's 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 pretty out there. Um, I wake up every morning looking forward to uh, oh, no. attacking Russian uh, uh, camps and saving you know uh, uh, ch child rebel soldiers. Uh, but wow. <laughs> but it is it is, is a really fun game. Is it's, that the one you fight big boss in like a field? Like no, that is Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater, Snake where Eater. you uh, play. That's yeah, the yeah. last one. I'm so okay. you are playing as uh, Big Boss in this one, and oh. it's it's the final, it's the ninth and final, um, uh, I think, installment of. Uh, I'm sorry, the final game in the Metal Gear Sa Saga. It's directed, written, and designed by Hideo Kojima, um, and you know, as you know, he completely split uh, ways with um, Nami. Yeah, yeah, Konami. So yeah. this is like this is it as far as like having the uh, the founder and OG being involved. Does it make any more sense, man? <laughs> so, sorta, sorta, no sorta, in on. the sense of like, it is crazy that they've been working backwards this whole time. So this is a prequel ish. It is because Big Boss is dead, right? Well, I think this I haven't beaten it yet for, oh. for starters. But I mean, it's no secret that Big Boss, when you play Metal Gear Solid One, Big Boss is has been dead, and I think you end up defeating Big Boss in one of like the OG Nintendo uh, version games, which I haven't played like the original Nintendo mm. uh, Metal Gear yeah. Solid Metal Gear games, but. But yes, it is essentially like just kind of a prequel to a prequel to a prequel, gotcha. right? But it is, it's fun. It's just like really involved. It's more, uh, you got to think a little differently in this game because it is like open world. So you've still got to be strategic and, you know, sneak around. But 
Uh, was and the one you, you had to unplug the controller? Yeah, no, that yeah, yeah, that was one. That was one. Um, okay. But yeah, that, <laughs> which I mean, honestly, I think it, that was such a moment, you know, for a lot of people playing that game. Like anytime people would bring up, you, you branch Metal Gear Solid to a crowd, and someone's gonna be like. Remember when you had to unplug your yeah, uh, that's what I remember. A player two to beat Psycho Mantis? Yeah. I remember not knowing what the hell was going on and having to do weird shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, long story short, Metal Gear Solid uh, 5, Phantom huh. Pain, if you're like me and, and you were just on the fence about it, you never got around to it, and you're a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, it is well worth um, uh, getting into, clocking in the hours. I think there's 46 main missions. I'm on, like, uh, mission 19. It's definitely it's, in, in, involved, but a, a whole lot PS3. of fun. PS4. PS4. Four? PS4. Four? Okay. So, um, yeah, check it out. Play it. It's, it's well worth it. That's really my only champion. Um, I, I did want to share uh, oh, just a, some words about Eternals because I know some folks had had asked me about um, the Eternals movie, since, uh, the Eternal movie, um, especially since our last uh, crew episode was a spotlight on the original Jack Kirby stuff. What I'll say about it, uh, and I was hoping Cesar was going to be able to join for this episode, but he is doing the most... Um, old man slash nineties, <laughs> uh, crusty old man nineties thing oh. ever. He's at Rockville. He's got his uh, Jinkos on, <laughs> his wallet chain. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So Cesar is enjoying himself being a, an old crusty rockhead, oh. but more power to him. I'm happy for him. Um, so I'll go <laughs> ahead and, and just share my thoughts on Eternals, and 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 I'll start out with the positive, uh, and try to keep it spoiler free just in case. I mean, the movie only came out a week. I'll keep it spoiler free for this week. Um, <clears throat> The positives, the positives. Sorry, the Celestials are fantastic. Uh, they really kind of like. I think this movie and their their inclusion into the MCU like really broadens the scope of the MCU. Like you feel like holy shit, this world managed to just get like even bigger. You know, because they're playing with like the concept of creation and 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 whatnot, and a lot of things that we were talking about in our episode where like Jack Kirby managed to create this this property and these in these characters that tie into the very core and, and root and, and beginnings of the Marvel comic universe, that's kind of the feeling you get watching this movie. It's like, oh, shit. Like, they're playing with, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, cosmic beings creating yeah. people and et cetera. So there's that sense of, like, grandiose scope. Um, there's a lot of really good-looking scenes and, and um, you know, center photography, in my opinion. Like, anytime Angelina Jolie shows up in the movie, She's got some really well thought out shot, like really uh, um, stylistic shots, and and um, yeah, she's fantastic in it. Well, like she's you like, leave this movie for and you're one like, of the most beautiful people in the world. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it only makes sense that like you know she gets like these really pristine, so cool looking, blonde. captivating, she's Thena, stunning right? shots. Yeah, she okay. plays Thena. Um, and by the time you leave the movie, you're like, holy shit, why hasn't Angelina Jolie? been in the mcu prior to this like i need more of her because <laughs> she absolutely kills it um so those are my positive those are like the things i thoroughly enjoyed and, and you, you spoiled there's no carcass no carcass i'm sorry <laughs> I, I, no I was, reject either uh, no they, no pretty motherfucking name reject at all <laughs> that would have been an instant five star 100 percent for me if carcass yeah I, know. I, was, I was waiting for it metal but, pants <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, <laughs> let me see. But I, so, some of the uh, some of the improvements, or, or sorry, some of the I don't know, some of the things that kind of bum me out. Right, there are sometimes where you feel the the length of this movie. Like mm. sometimes it feels like, sure. yeah, this is a two and a half plus hour movie. Yeah, like you know, you kind of feel like, oh, can we please get to something? You know, like for the most part, t to me, there was a lot of uneventful moments where I wish it was more show rather than tell because they spent mm. a lot of time. Much like Suicide Squad, where, hey, let's go walk to this person's house and tell them about this plot point <laughs> or what's going on. It was, I don't know, it just felt kind of redundant at times. And um, With so many people to balance. Yeah, you and know, it's a lot yeah, of big I, cast. And I get it. And, and I heard a really good um, uh, a point to that. Um, and, and one of these, uh, yeah, I heard a really good point to that, where it's like in a world where we're getting Marvel Plus shows, I'm um, sorry, where we're getting Marvel shows on Disney Plus. Maybe we should start leaning into that as a medium for oh, yeah. some of these, uh, especially like big kind of concepts like Eternals, where we need time to flesh things out. We need, you know, yeah. we've got a lot of characters. We can dedicate episodes to this and that. Like, let's leverage, let's see more of that. And I'm all here for it, even if it means waiting longer periods to get these shows. Yeah, I think, especially with this ensemble, I mean, I don't know if they could use these actors per se because they're all, you know, top shelf. But, yeah, true. true. But Man, a series with this—you need a series to yeah. explain the high, the concept of this, and just 
we're building like a universe like mm -hmm. galaxies this is like the origin of creation you know this is yep. big and, and a lot of concepts that they introduce they, they introduce a lot of cool concepts and i won't get into uh, detail just to avoid spoilers but they introduce a lot of cool concepts um that you're like holy shit that's really cool oh, that's a good plot twist from the original source material oh wow i mm -hmm. wonder how that's going to impact this character but sometimes it feels like it, it those plot points either fall short or they're not they don't give it to you at least in this movie maybe they'll revisit them in, in later stuff but some of the things they introduce uh, uh they just don't pay off very well um which i think kind of hurts it and once again you, you feel like damn it uh if only they would have stayed on that so, and you know but towards the end you're like all right i get it they needed to wrap this shit up because we've yeah. been here for two hours now, but it's like damn it no that was really cool like what, what else is there to that i know marvel has a pretty good track record of this but in your opinion do you think if you had zero familiarity with these characters it's kind of an easy oh, thing dude, to yes fall yeah, into absolutely absolutely yes that's um, the tricky part it's like yeah no dude I, I think we made a joke I, I think on our episode that you know uh, they'll probably spend all two hours explaining this whole wild ass concept that jack kirby <laughs> came up with but i thought they did a really good job keeping it high level simple but still like you still got the the um uh, the epicness of it mm. as well um and what i what i will say is that this is a unique one of the more unique looking marvel movies and i think a large part of that plays in, is because they are a lot of the settings take place in like you know uh, uh biblical uh biblical times or, or like mm. these civilizations that you've only maybe only read or, or heard of or so seen they do some time jumps yeah this? yeah like oh, some okay. of the uh, cool. uh the the settings that they they take you to is like wow this looks really cool like I, nice. let's stay here <laughs> you know let's <laughs> let's stay here so but overall I, I will say it's it's worth seeing the theaters uh, or seeing um, just to kind of like, you know, add, I'm sorry, it's definitely worth seeing. Um, they're taking, phase four is just interesting to me, man. It, it's, it feels so much different than, you know, what we got with phase one through uh, three, you know, like one through three, I felt like had a very clear mission statement. Yeah. Phase four, I think you're still seeing like a lot of these ideas being played out. Yeah. And, and it's like they're uh, world form. building. In yeah. Phase four, and, and if anything, I almost feel like they're giving us two kind of separate paths because by the time you finish this movie and you see the end credits, which are fucking awesome um uh, uh, uh like comic heads will get hype over the uh the first end credit and then even the second one you're like oh shit we going here was it more hype than the thanos if you had to compare Oof. nah i remember no, okay. uh, you remember okay. seeing like thanos for the first time and it's like oh <gasps> what the fuck i think i audibly gasped <laughs> yeah that <laughs> shit was like, crazy i was like holy shit is that thanos and the person <laughs> that went with had no idea what i was talking about <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, the two that you Shut get up, nerd. the two that you get <laughs> the two that you get from this one you're like oh shit like these has got these have got to be like separate tracks right like they're just i'm kind of hoping that we get like separate tracks going on it doesn't have to all like tie in i'm hoping that like they play yeah. around with what they introduce but um i know that was a very uh a vague uh review um, but like I said, maybe I'll, I'll revisit and give a more detailed one when um, when C can join us, and, it, and it's been a couple of days. But uh, Ashley, Ed, are, do you guys have any plans to see Eternals? Yeah, I want to see it. I'm been like I said, there's I definitely it's definitely on the list to see. I just haven't had a chance to do. I was going to try to do it before today, but I just didn't get a chance to head to the theater. But okay. yeah, it's definitely yeah. Definitely same. It. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely um I am excited to be able to get a second viewing of shang chi uh thanks to disney plus day Ooh. so that's probably what i'm gonna do tonight and i think we are at a good uh no actually we are not a good stopping oh. point because uh since this segment is brought to you by our good friends at black hive tattoo uh nick wagner the head honcho of black hive himself he's going to help us close out this week's champion season segment so let's hear what he's going to champion uh for us hmm. ashley i wonder if this will play for you Hey guys, it's Nick Wagner from Black yeah. Tattoo again awesome. with this week's pick. It's been a little while. Actually, let me uh, let me replay that because I can probably just keep this into the recording. All right. Hey guys, it's Nick Wagner from Black Hive Tattoo again with this week's pick. It's been a little while, but I had something that I've been rereading, and I was apparently, as usual, late to the game. I think number two is out for this. It's Echo Lands from Image Comics. If you are a fan of the art in Sandman Overture. This is gonna be right up your alley. It's beautiful and the story so far is incredible and I can't wait to see what comes. That's about it for this week. Have a good one. All right, thanks, Nick. Yeah, that's the one that has a, kind of that rectangular format. It's like a, it's a different comic shape. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 
So it doesn't fit on the shelf at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always like those those, <laughs> those cool interesting like kind of out of the uh the normal uh, uh format yeah. or form it sticks function. out for sure you're like oh wow this is really cool until you have to like put it up on your yeah. bookshelf or yeah. find a spot for it and you're like what it's like covering is... up half another comic <laughs> like, what is this like the, I, I love the treasury editions until <laughs> oh i get them and i'm like huh none of my ikea shelves fit this you know like you gotta find like I Are guess I'll put it by the fridge. Like this big? Yeah. This, like, <laughs> who's this for? I, I looked up uh, Echo Lands real quick, and uh, you know, uh, like Nick said, it's a, it's a new image series, but it's written by um, J. H. Williams, which uh, I'm familiar with him from like uh, um, the the Batwoman uh, team. Well, actually, oh. I think it is the Batwoman team because you got J. H. Williams, uh, W. Hayden Blackman, who mm. uh, wrote a really good Electra series back when Marvel had like their Marvel. Their Marvel Now. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marvel Now line. He did it mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Mike Del Mundo, which is still yes, fantastic. I remember that, yeah. But, and then you've got Dave Stewart. Come on, oh, Color yeah. Supreme Dave Stewart. So, this looks pretty cool. This looks really good. Looks like Little Red Riding Hood, but a really total badass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ashley, are you familiar with it? Have you seen Echo Lands? No, I haven't, actually. I'm going to look for it. Yeah, yeah, Ed, like you said, it's a landscape format mythic fiction epic where anything is possible. Yeah, so that sounds pretty cool. All right, Nick, thank you so much for chiming in for champion season. And that really now that I'm sorry, thank you so much for champion season. That officially brings us to the end of the show. Uh, before I get into our outro, before we get out of here, um, Ed, Ashley, what did we learn today? Help us close out the show. Ashley, what did you learn today? What did I learn? Dang, I forgot we were doing this part. <laughs> <laughs> New segment. <laughs> um, I mean, all that Disney Plus stuff was really cool. I, uh, I'm very excited for Chippendale Rescue Rangers. And I guess I will see Eternals um, without Carcass, whatever. I'll still pay the $15 yeah, for the that's ticket. That's what I learned, and I'm bummed. <laughs> <laughs> no Carcass or Reject. Well, um, maybe in the sequel. I yeah, learned, uh, <laughs> I learned two big things today. Um, for starters, it's Taka Wa Titi. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's not though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and I learned that Jodorowsky is still alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I learned Jodorowsky is wow. still alive. <laughs> um, and I also learned maybe the most important lesson, which is. Uh, don't rely on Google Translate to give you 100% accurate <laughs> uh, translation of uh, Spanish curse words. Shout out to Team Mix. Yeah. All right, but that's that's truly it. So there you have it, Shortbox Nation. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this week. Uh, let us know what you thought um, about Disney Plus Day. Maybe there was uh, an announcement or a title card that we didn't highlight. Um, tell us what your most anticipated uh, project or, or show coming out is. Um, I did forget, real quick, uh, on the topic of that. I am so much more, I am that much more excited for the Hawkeye series to come out. Mm, like yeah. the, the, the oh, um, yeah. they do show, um, actually, I don't know. You said you didn't watch the trailer. I mm -mm. think they have a, um, like a long fucking, uh, um, they show like a, a, a good scene from the Hawkeye series. I know you're not into like spoilers or anything, which I guess is not worth watching because it comes out in a few weeks. But it had me even more hype for this Hawkeye series. I wish he still had that sweet faux hawk. No, I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad they, they put some respect <laughs> on, on his name. <laughs> oh, that was glorious. <laughs> was glorious lion. for all the wrong reasons. It's like a lion. It's but great. Anyway, Sherlock Nation, uh, like I said, let us know, uh, you know what you're looking forward to when it comes to Disney Plus Day and all, and all the new uh, Marvel Studio announcements or even non-Marvel Studio announcements. Let us know what you thought. Um, next week, we are going to do a Hawkeye um, a spotlight. We're going to be talking about the Matt Fraction, David Aja run from, what was that, like 2000? What year was that, Ashley? 2000 something? I just remember I was working at the comic shop. Oh, yes. Those, the glory days, as you like to call them. It was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so glorious. Yeah, but I remember when that series came out, it was like, it was really a good. pretty good ass time to be at like a, a, a fan. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so that run came out in 2012. Wow. So we'll be talking about the first uh, volume, which will probably be the first six issues of that Matt Fraction David Aja run from 2012. Uh, it'll be just in time for the new Hawkeye series that will be uh, debuting on Disney Plus uh, later this month. So make sure that you guys come back next week for that episode. Hopefully we'll have Cesar back. We'll see how he survives um, fucking <laughs> Rockville. Oh, don't go in the mosh pit, see? <laughs> Not worth it. 
<laughs> um, so yeah. But in the meantime, you can creep into our DMs on social media or send us a short email to read next episode. Write us at theshortboxjacks at gmail.com. Um, gmail.com. But if that's too long for you to wait, check out the latest episode. Uh, what's that right there? I'm fucking up. And speaking of our next episode, we're doing that Hawkeye series. But if that's too long for you to wait, make sure to check out the latest episode of our spinoff podcast, Pilot's License. If you love classic comic book cartoons and animated shows, as much as we do, the series is for you. We just dropped an episode all about Batman Beyond. And more than likely, because of this uh, X-Men 97 news, Ooh. our next episode will probably be about uh, X-Men the Animated Series. I, like I think it. it's only right. So you can check that out as well as all of our bonus content, all of our, our, our bonus episodes over on our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the short box to sign up or just click the link or just click the link in our show notes. Um, and don't forget about that live show. It'll be December 10th. It'll be mm. Spider-Man themed just in time for the movie. If you live in Jack to the surrounding area, I'm telling you it's worth it. Tickets are free. Just uh, register to that Eventbrite link in the show notes. In the meantime, Give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter if you haven't. And most importantly, take care of yourself. Have a great day. And please continue to make mine and yours short box. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.